to a, another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be a BSL Season 12 Group B, which ha and this is going to be the second game between Zamurai, aka Zamu, upper right-hand corner, as the white Zerg, upper left-hand corner. We have Cookie, aka Jess, who I believe is in Twitch, but maybe a bit silent as the yellow Protoss going by Cookie in this game. And this is going to be on Polypoid. So game one, Jess really controlling the match top to bottom had, on Blue Storm. Saw twice as many Zealots, basically twice the supply in pure Zealots comparative. And that really messed with... I, I like mess with me a little bit. It's not you. I'm not used to seeing Protoss versus Zerg matches where it's literally a hundred supply of Zealots going up. Uh, Jess looks like setting up for a Forge fast expand style build. It is possible we'll see a gateway here because this has been another popular thing to do: is open up a gateway, apply a little bit of pressure, try to eke out a couple Zerglings, and then seal it. So more or less, you're doing a bit of economic damage by being aggressive against your Zerg opponent. We do see a pool first, opposite corner from Zamu. Which, against gateway openers, depending on how many Zerglings are produced right off the bat, can put the Protoss in a risky situation. We are seeing gateway first. Because here's the thing, if you see the full complement of six Zerglings produced, that's, especially with some micro, looks like we're seeing that as extractor trick. Especially with some micro, you can end up killing that initial Zealot and then have bonus Zerglings that can kind of rush through, get on top of that gateway, and or get into the main, kill some probes and things like that. And then you, it, at, from the Protoss perspective, you really got to micro your way out of it. Looks like that drone moving out to do scout. Now the question is, it's going to be scouting. Seeing this probe initially gives a good indication to Zamu where where Jess's base is. And right here, Zamu being a little bit creative, acting like going for that natural expansion that's going to force another pylon out. And that is going to delay the first zealot, which is unfortunate for Jess. Because with that, you got six, six zerglings being produced. Now the first zealot's on the way. And because that initial 100 minerals was placed on that pylon, it's if the... Oh, there's a cancellation to get those minerals back. So really nothing... Oh, that's unfortunate for Jess. And that's just kind of a, a, a little bit of misfortune. The question is, does Zamu realize that this base is to the left? Yeah, does because of that probe scouting direction. Maybe? Okay, yeah, now moving. One Zergling peeling off to go ahead and deal with that probe. One Zealot is there. Second Zealot's on the way, but needs to play home base and defensive. Might need another structure here. So there's, there's the forge to try to plug the gap, but this is going to be five Zerglings and per potentially more to come. Looks like, yeah, another group of Zerglings being produced. Probe down. Zerglings pushing that gap. Already have two probe kills. Going to get three probe kills. Definitely worth it for one Zergling. And four Zerglings still alive. That front door is breached. Another Zealot is going to have to spawn. And that the single Zealot isn't enough to plug the gap, as we've already seen. So Jess in a bit of trouble here. Probes being disrupted a bit. You can see them pulling off the line to try to provide a bit of defense. So this is going to slow a lot of mining down. And this is just going to create a lot of frustration in the base for Jess. And additional Zerglings are probably, yeah, streaming their way across. So another, so that initial Zergling that was split off, sneaking through. So now we have five Zerglings versus, it looks like, three Zealots. But it looks like the Zerglings just going to kind of dance around in the main. Now getting a surround on the one Zealot. Good micro there by Zamu. Really putting that Zealot at half health Great micro, a photon cannon being built, but with all of this, this is a significant amount of economic damage. I like what Jess is doing, saying, okay, I'm going to get that cannon down to deal with these Zerglings at my main, and then I'm going to push my Zealots forward to go ahead and try to do some economic damage comparatively. Zergling speed is being upgraded. Now the question is, is do these Zerglings, it looks like they're going to try to work on that cannon, working on that Zealot now. Are they going to get the Zealot kill as well? So two Zealots a little bit low in health, but only two Zerglings left remaining. Now one Zergling left remaining. A decent win. It looks like the Zealot at the natural expansion, one of them was taken out. The second one might get taken out as well. So just a little bit economically behind here. Or I should say actually potentially significantly economically behind. Because here we have Zamu ready to go ahead and take a third hatchery. You do have a significant amount of Zealots, but two of them are heavily damaged. And the natural expansion isn't even up yet. Plus, no gas, no tech. Layer about halfway finished, so behind in tech, a lot of Zerglings on the ground. The one advantage here is Zamu has mostly built Zerglings. Mostly built Zerglings. Actually pushing up and maybe almost throwing those Zerglings away. Did get Zergling speed. Now, but has a, a degree of map control with these Zergling speed, so Jess needs to keep these ults at home base. Oh, this is not a great position. 
plopping the nexus down at what is this five minute mark so five minute nexus overlords in the main just go ahead and check the situation out and with the layer finished now jess is in a terrible situation let's see if we see the spire yeah we are seeing the spire at the main probe is going to be able to wander up maybe and get that scout but here's the thing without that cybernetics core even warping in yet it's going to have to be a pure cannon defense pure cannon and potentially dragoons to deal with three hatch mutalisk the question is, is Zamu, with his just 14 drones currently, is he going to have the economy to produce sufficient mutalisks to really capitalize on this? So cybernetic scores warping in, but the Spire is already halfway finished. So there's going to be very, very little anti-air. Zamu is only floating 100 gas currently, though. Is producing more drones to go ahead and get that working. Still hasn't capped the second gas. Does have that third going. Now, here's the thing. Even if the Mutalisks don't do immense amounts of damage, we do see a cannon warping in at that natural expansion. We are seeing a cannon warp in at the main. This is more resources that, again, just doesn't want to spend on static defense. Wants to start, especially being already economically behind with the three bases. And you can see, even if these Mutalisks don't do immense amount of damage, and it looks like there's going to at least be three initially, although a wave of drones produced right there in the main. And uh, I'm not seeing an... Well, okay, there is an Overlord... Uh, being built alongside to go ahead and produce. So at least three... So Spire finished. Is he going to just wait for to build the, the full five? It's going to be a little bit of time. So Scourge initially. Wow, okay. this is That's a confusing play from my perspective. Because if the timing was there, there could have been Mutalisks like already producing and on the way to the base. And with additional map control. Jess already concerned about that, plopping down additional Photon Cannons. So it's going to play out for Zamu. Maybe Zamu realizes this. He's like, okay, I know I'm going to be forcing that anyway. So let me just skip Mutalisk all the way around. Just power drone, get my three bases up, and play more of a contained game from the mid game. Because I know that Jess is going to have to expend a lot of resources in anti-air. So let me go ahead and get Scourge. Take down a Corsair, a Corsair. Keep Jess in the dark. And otherwise, play kind of a, a five hatch contained play from there. This might be a mistake, though, because as we've seen in other situations, Jess is a dangerous player. And honestly, I feel like you give Jess an inch, Jess will take a mile. So a lot of Zelt's being produced. There is... That's the other thing with the lack of Mutalisks, because I feel like, you know, there's just going to be Zelt's here on the front. So now there's also potential for maybe an opened up timing in a minute or two. I don't know. We'll see. Corsair, making its way towards the main, is going to be able to scout out that the Spire is, well, knows the Spire is there otherwise. Zealot's moving the way across. We see a flurry of upgrades towards Hydralisk Tech in the mid-game. Zealot's making their way across. There is, looks like, Second Sun Colony being forced. Decent SimCity on the front door. Corsair kind of scouting around. Not any anti-air to help protect the Overlords currently, all of a sudden, for Zamu. Maybe a Scourge will be produced at one of these locations. Some Hydralisks are going to pop up. It looks like before that Corsair is really able to get anything done. The Zealots making their way right to that third base. Going to force some additional drones to be created. Although, Zamu still in a fantastic economic position. Clearing out the Zerglings. And now has perhaps an open lane. To that natural. Nice. I like that play from Zamu. Dropping an evolution chamber to kind of force a SimCity there. Canceling it after the fact to get those minerals back. And additional Hydralisks now being produced. I'm expecting Lurker Tech to follow this momentarily after the range upgrade. and then Or maybe just pure Hydralisk and going for Hydralisk Contained. Weapons 1 on the way. Citadel of Dune, Zealot Speed also being built. A couple additional gateways. And I feel like now Jess is like, okay, I got maybe I have a window here. Maybe I have a window. Getting that Templar Archives. Preserved. So killed a lot of Zerglings. Forced a bit of unit production. And preserved all of the Zealots. And I'm going to say just still in a very unfavorable situation. Down 15 supply against a Zerg player. Not where you want to be. Plus, behind in the overall worker count. Again, not where you want to be. Going to be behind in upgrades. Momentarily. Because you're going to have that level 1 weapon plus the Hydralisk range. But, the Zealots are still going to be in place. Templar Archives gives opportunity... Uh, for High Templar, Dark Templar, something along those lines. So it is possible we'll see, I don't know, a miracle pulled out. Zamu, in the meantime, 
sneaking across everywhere, moving Zerglings, putting them in patrol on potential third bases. And the Hydralisks are now moving forward to go for, yeah, it looks like just a pure Hydralisk contain. And Zamu also sneaking up to go ahead and take that mineral only. It looks like. Or this drone. Yeah, I think that drone's moving out to go ahead and take that mineral only. To go up to four bases. So Hydralisk is going to camp out towards that third. And just play, try to play the contain game from here. The trick here is, though, with Psystorm, these Hydralisks can oftentimes just get annihilated. Psystorm's not yet upgraded. And unfortunately, not enough, yeah, not enough zealots to really go up against this Hydralisk force. So, ooh, this is going to be critical. Does Jess lose this weapons 1 upgrade? Going to need to cancel it at the very, yeah. Needs to cancel it, doesn't, you did cancel it. Okay, saves the minerals at the very least. So front door, more cannons being blockaded. Now Jess is in a just terrible situation because it's going to be Psystorm to basically stay alive. Otherwise, a Hydralisk contain is on the way. You have a Corsair for scouting to at least get a kind of good look at what's going on there, but Lurkers are not that far off. And very quickly, it's going to be four base versus two base, so a couple additional gateways being plopped down and a robotics facility, interesting. Kind of curious about the robotics facility. I assume this is to get, <coughs> excuse me, some, some of the shuttles, maybe go for some storm drops. So I think what we're going to potentially see here is primarily a Zealot attack force. Zealot's kind of wandering through, it looks like clearing a couple Zerglings. Primarily a Zealot attack force. High Templar, I'm curious how Jess is going to play this. It looks like going to just try to take this natural expansion honestly without the, or sorry, this mineral only expansion, honestly without the capacity to hold it. Relying on Zamu's, I don't know, graciousness to not attack that base currently. Zamu actually backing up, playing very defensively. Continuing to macro up is now at a worker count of 50. Overlord wandering up with speed, sees... Yeah, everything at the natural expansion, which actually is decent. I actually like this positioning now, because decently defended can try to defend this third, engage this, and then crash on anything that's moving towards that natural expansion, as long as macro stays consistent. Still 20 supply back, though. Corsair's taken out in the meantime. More lurkers burrowed towards that third base. So Zamu, it looks like, is happy to kind of just play the economic game, go for the economic lead. Le level 2 weapons on the way, by the way. <clears throat> level 1, and that's going to remain consistent. We do see Cybernetics, of course, spinning to produce some Dragoons to deal with uh, potential Lurkers in the near future. We also have the Robotics Facility producing Observers uh, to deal with the Lurker contain. I assumed Observers were going to be skipped for the Shuttle first for the for the High Templar Storm as more of a defensive measure, but wise to get the Observer to try to break with this, particularly in, in taking this third, this third base Here's the critical thing for Jess. Jess needs, and that, that's where the observers will also help. Jess needs to keep an eye kind of in this mid area. As Zamu, shortly, should be able to just start producing units in mass. And can start crashing down on these bases and either picking off things and continuing to expand absolutely everywhere. Or just inflicting punishment and clearing out uh, Jess's unit count. <clears throat> keep things thin in that regard. Uh, or, you know, just win the game outright through <laughs> massive amounts of Hydralisks, etc. Level 1 weapons still continuing at the third base. This is a risky place to play it. We do have a uh, cannon warping in. I think this is also to provide, I don't know, a degree of some city, maybe, to protect the High Templar. More Hydralisks sneaking up. Actually, just walking in. It looks like they're trying to do position... They had to know that was there. So walking up, taking a bit of damage, one Hydralisk being killed and backing right back out. <clears throat> Zamu continues to have a supply lead, continues to have an economic lead. Has a significant upgrade lead, but is not making any movements towards an attack. We see some Dark Templars scooping up in this shuttle, and some High Templar as well. This is going to be Jess's opportunity to sneak back in the match. Keep in mind, this Zergling might be the X Factor here. If Zamu can spot it, depending on the movement of this shuttle. I lost the shuttle. Where's that shuttle? There's the Observer. Here's the shuttle. So we're going to take Vision off. We'll see if that Zergling spots it. Zergling did spot it. Does Zamu react? Okay, he's got these high... He's got some units right there. An Observer killed on the field. It does have Scourge. Ah! Oh, things looking ugly now for Jess. So, good defense on Zamu's part. Even has the Hydralisks on patrol. And is starting to, yeah, really close the grip. So this is this is four base Zerg now. Versus three base Protoss. Level 1 weapons is just coming online. While the Hydralisks are already at level 2, level 1 armor. And... Zamu is starting to move towards 200 supply. Is starting to just start build units, as you can see uh, in the upper left-hand corner here. 
and honestly can press towards hive tech yeah hive tech about three fourths finish and can comfortably do so start picking away at things are going to be able to sneak and get the high templar really he's just kind of peeked in with like maybe a control group and then snuck back out just starting to move forward wanting to go ahead and maybe try to establish a force forth i feel like this is just kind of a scouting party from zamu playing very very defensively picking off a couple dragoons eating a lot of psy storm and actually, it looks like just uh, taking a little bit of shield damage as well. A lurker drop. Yeah, just just going to call GE. It looks like some lurkers managed to get behind the detection line. I think the observers had gotten picked off in the front field. Just realizing the economic situation, 173 supply. Uh, really, that shuttle getting taken out felt like it was the nail in the coffin. So we're going to move on to a game three between Zamu and Jess. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.